Today, we are gonna be telling you guys the importance of easy runs, and even though it may seem counterintuitive, why running slower will make you faster. Okay guys, so we just got in the car, so we are going to head out to a nice jogging spot for today's easy run. So we're taking this opportunity to talk to you guys about really the importance of an easy run and what it should look like. So let's talk about the importance of an easy run. So when in any good plan, an easy run should make up about 80% of your overall training volume. So say if you're doing 10 miles in a week, about eight of those miles should be ran at an easy run pace and the reason this is so important is because you need to focus on keeping your easy days easy so that way on your hard days like your speed or tempo work that you can actually go hard on those hard days easy runs are gonna be for getting up your aerobic base as well as ensuring that you're able to deliver on those hard days All right, so we just got to our destination. Normally we run just next to our apartment, but today we decided to go to a cool spot, Waterton Canyon, just perks of living in Colorado, I guess. But before getting into starting easy runs, you're gonna need to figure out what is your easy pace? So the first way that you can figure that out that's really helpful is to go based off of your heart rate. So there are five different zones in running, basically correlating with how hard of an effort you're giving. But basically, you wanna keep around a zone two, a zone three run if you can, to make sure your heart rate doesn't get too high and make sure that you're basically not giving too hard of an effort. The reason why this is important is this is gonna ensure that you train your aerobic engine and is gonna give you the best performance as you're doing endurance type events. The other thing you might find helpful is to look up an online pace calculator. So what these do, I found a really good one from runnersworld.com. So you can put in a previous race distance that you completed before. You just put in the distance, you put in the time that it took to complete you, and then it'll output all of your paces that you should run for different runs. So the first one I believe is an easy run, but it'll also tell you like a tempo pace if you're doing all sorts of different paces, but an easy one is what you wanna focus on. The third way that you can find your easy pace is to just go off of feel. So not overcomplicating it, just making sure that you're running at an easy pace. And an easy way to do that is to make sure that you can hold a conversation. Some people say you could speak a full sentence, say a whole paragraph. I don't know what it is, but as long as you feel comfortable speaking, that should tell you that you're going at a slow enough pace. If you're huffing and puffing a little bit, it's hard to breathe, it's hard to talk, yeah, you're probably going too fast. But We'll show you exactly what we mean by this. So, to give you an example, our half marathon goal pace is about a nine minute mile. So, for our easy runs, we do about 12 minute pace. That enables us to make sure we're able to talk a little bit and just get our heart rate elevated enough to get some gains. finished our run gotta go get back to the car and warm up because it is chilly outside wind picked up once we got out of the canyon Okay guys, so easy run has been done. So now that we finished it up, I think it's really important to highlight 
easy runs, even though easy is in the name, there's actually three ways that you can actually pretty much mess it up. So first one, it might sound easy, but you can mess up by not going easy enough. I know that sometimes you feel like maybe you have to break a sweat in order to consider it a workout or it just feels so good when you push yourself. I totally get it. But to get the most out of running, you wanna make sure that your easy runs are easy because going out too hard, what that's gonna result in is you performing poorly on those hard, on those tempo days, as well as not giving your body enough time for proper recovery. The other thing that you can mess up with easy runs if you do have a running watch is being a slave to your heart rate. Really using like a wrist-based heart rate is some sort of way to gather some data, but just take it with a grain of salt. Unless you're using like a chest strap monitor, and even if you are, use it more as a guideline. You don't want to be a slave to the numbers because there can be times that maybe according to your numbers, the pace might say that, hey, this is your easy, this is your aerobic zone, but in reality, you are just huffing and puffing, and it's just not a good day. We all have our bad days, so take it easier, even if that means drawing back a bit more. And then the last thing that you want to keep in mind is doing an adequate load of aerobic pace. So you want to make sure that you're doing enough. You also want to make sure that you're not doing too much. I guess an easy guideline to go by is really just like the 80-20 rule. So make sure that like 80% of your runs are in that aerobic base zone, and then the 20%, that can be your speed work that can be your tempo stuff any less uh you're not really going to be giving yourself enough recovery uh and any more you're not going to be prioritizing your speed days enough and so you're not going to be progressing as fast as you would like to so now that you know the importance of easy runs here are a few ways that you can incorporate them into your plan so one way that you can do easy runs is just time based so this would be something like just saying i'm gonna do a 60 minute run you know you don't really care about the distance it's just about getting time on your feet and you'll make sure that you stay at an easy pace that whole time the other type of run is going to be a distance based run so this is where you're going to set a actual mileage that you want to achieve so let's say i want to do a five mile run in reality a five mile run and a 60 minute run might be the exact same thing but personally we prefer to do distance based runs because we usually leave and come back to the same location and it's nice to have the same distance that you can just turn around at your halfway point and get back to where you started but sometimes time base can be nice too if you're on a treadmill or something like that so those are the two types of easy runs you can pick and choose whichever you'd like you can do both whatever just make sure that you get more into your training plan so that's gonna do it for this video we are done talking about easy runs hopefully now you know the importance and you'll start incorporating it into your own plan but stay tuned to us for next week we're going to be talking about long runs we'll take you on our nine mile run next week and tell you all about how to master the long run thanks guys and stick around for new videos <laughs>